for yet another day to come and share on this glorious day. Surely God has been good to us. He bless us to see another Sunday we've never seen before. When nobody but the Lord has let us be here yet another day. Amen. Surely thank God for those that have been a blessing to us through the year. Those who have watched us on the internet and share with us on whatever uh, site is on that you see us. We certainly thank you for uh, supporting us at Baptist Church uh, by just watching our videos. And this is the last one of the year, uh, being the last Sunday of the year, 2018. So we certainly thank God for your support through the year. Galatians chapter 6 is our text today. I want to look at verses 7 through 9. 7 through 9. The Apostle Paul writes to the church in Galatia, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall reap of the flesh corruption. But he that soweth unto the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap in the faint night. We shall reap in the faint night. Dear God, we thank you today for another chance to come and to preach the word of thee. We pray, Lord, that you continue to bless us and to bless this church. Bless this ministry and let it grow as you see fit. That God, we ask you to continue to empower us to do your will and to go forth in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, bless us. Bless us, Lord. Bless us, Lord, as we come to present and preach the word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season, we shall reap if we fight not. I want to talk today on the simple subject, reap what you sow. Reap what you sow. Today is the last Sunday of the year, 2018. This is the last Lord's Day of the year in 2018. The Lord's Day in the Bible is the day of the week that the Christian church recognizes the first day of the week. The church emphasizes this day in particular over any other day because Jesus Christ rose early on the third day morning, which was the first day of the week. Mark 16 and 9 says, Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, of whom he cast seven out of seven devils. Then John 20, 19 reads, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, when the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, peace be unto you. First Corinthians 16 and 2, the Bible says, it was the first day of the week that every one of you laid up by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. The day of the week is the Lord's day. This day of the week is the Lord's day. It is not a day for us to casually hang around and do what we will, or to lay back and take it easy and forget that God has supplied all our needs and has saved us by the blood that was shed on the cross by Jesus Christ, his son at Calvary. But it is a day of worship and a fellowship with the saints of God. It is a day of lifting up high the name of Jesus Christ. Huh? Who is our Lord and Savior? He is our El Shaddai, who is God Almighty in the Old Testament. Or God in the second person of the Holy Trinity. You see, Jesus, we all need, you see, church, we all need the church. 
We all need the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. We all need Jesus Christ who makes intercession for us when we pray to God the Father through Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. We all need God the Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, the maker and creator of all mankind from the heavens, the maker of the earth, and the maker of the universe as a whole. You see, without God on our side, we would be nothing. Without God with us, we could not have made it through the year 2018. Without God in our lives, without God fighting and fighting our battles, we wouldn't have made it thus far. You see, the year is rapidly coming to an end. We have not yet made it to the end of the year, but we are going to be there very shortly. You see, you see, we have become a year older since this time last year. And I, and I hate to tell you that we are just a step closer to the graveyard and to our own eternal destiny. We have not made it into the year 2019 as of yet, but if we live to see Tuesday morning at 12.01 a.m., we will have arrived into a new year. We will have arrived into a new time in the history of this planet called Earth that has never been visited by our forefathers who have gone before us, nor by any time travelers that we know of. Yes, church, it has been a challenging year in 2018 for most of us. We have had our ups and we've had our downs. Sometimes good and sometimes bad. We have our valleys to go through and we have our hills to climb. But just like the song I heard a man sing on the radio, but when I look around and think things over. All of my good days. The man said he outweigh my bad days. And I won't complain. Isn't that what he said? He said, I won't complain. He did not say that I do not have the right to complain. That I do not have the right to belly and get upset with God, my family, and the world. But complaining and crying about all the bad things in life will get us nowhere with God. And it just makes us bitter and can take a rest and hate for people to be around. And when that type of attitude rules our being, then no one wants to be around us. Nor do they want to have anything to do with us if we don't act like we ought to act before other folk. Church, I've come to recognize in this life that you reap what you sow. Oh, well, nobody want to hear this sermon today. You reap what you sow. Treat people bad, and eventually you'll be treated bad by others. Someone said, walk in the rain without some type of rain gear or protective clothing, and you will be wet after coming in out of the rain. Put your hand in a fire, literally or figuratively, and eventually your hand will receive some type or degree of burn. Forget to give God his tithe on the first of the week. And you will see how your finances will start going backwards. And you will start missing the blessing that God can shower upon you when he opens the window of heaven when you give. Jesus told the disciples at the end of his sermon on the mount in Matthew 7, 12. Therefore all things whatsoever you will that men should do to you, do you even so to them. He said, for this is the law and the prophets. In other words, he tells all of us, whether we are saints or sinners, whether we are agnostics or atheists, whether we are deists or whoever we are, all human beings alike are told to treat people the way you want to be treated. In other words, and for a uh, uh, precise reason, because you will reap what you sow. Why? Because in God's word, Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7, the word of God reads, Be not deceived, God is not mine. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Church, I want you to understand today that God is not your faith toy.
Can I say that again? God is not your play toy. You want to play toy, go to Walmart and buy you something to play with. He is not your punching bag. And he certainly is not your cut buddy. He is God. And he changes not. Don't be deceived or fool yourself. Whatsoever a man or woman or boy or girl does or sows, that what we will reap. You say, what are you talking about, friend? I'm saying there's analogies all over the world. A farmer plants corn not expecting to grow rice. An apple tree will not produce oranges. Hatred will not exhibit any form of love. I was just joking, uh, we will not cover the fact that you meant what you said. Look at, look at, look at verse 8. It says, for he that soweth to his flesh, what is that? Shall do what? Shall reap corruption. But if he that soweth to the spirit, what after them? Shall reap what? Everlasting. He said, when you sow to the Spirit, that's when you will reap everlasting life of the Spirit. Jesus told the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, who came to him by night in verse 3 of John chapter 3. He said, Man and God, I say unto thee, as shall the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Then he answered another of Nicodemus' question in verse 5 of the same book and chapter by saying, Belly, belly, I say unto thee, as that they may be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter in the kingdom of God. Then verse 6 says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is what? Spirit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man and woman must sow to the spirit in order to reap life everlasting. You see, the flesh must be killed spiritually on a daily basis. Then when you go to verse 9 of the same text of Galatians chapter 6, the apostle Paul writes, and let us not be weary in well-doing. But when due season, what's going to happen? We shall well we shall reap. In due season, we shall reap. But what else got to happen? If we faint not. So if you faint, then what happens? You can't reap. If you quit, you can't win. Winners never quit. And quitters do what? Never win. Yeah, yeah. Don't give up on trying to do good to others. Even though they may hate you without a cause. Don't get weary, frustrated, or ticked off by the rare responses you might receive when trying to treat people the way you want to be treated. Understand, church, some folk don't like you, your family, or your God. And some don't even like themselves. Huh? We read it earlier, Romans 12, 18 says, If it be possible, as much as lie in you, live peaceably, with what? All men. Then go to the 20th verse of Romans 12. The Holy Spirit says, Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Church, don't be weary in well doing. But the Bible says in due season, we're going to reap if we faint not. You got to hang on in there. You can't give up every time the going get tough. You can't quit every time it get a little bit hard. But you gotta hang in there. See, don't quit, church, because pay is coming after a while. If you just hold on a little while longer. And so that's why I'm so glad today to know that Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, did not give up on the plan of salvation. Huh? Because that plan was put together before the foundation of the world was ever laid. Huh? Jesus agonized in the Garden of Gethsemane with going to the cross in his humanity. But in his deity, he said, not my will, 
but thine will be done. He had to, he had to show his body to the ground so that we might meet a resurrection body during his rapture of the church when he comes back in the clouds to receive his long-awaited bride of the church. He sold his body by going to hell. He was put on an old rugged cross. His blood came streaming down. He died the death of a male factor as a criminal whose only crime was loving the world so much that he would give his life a ransom for you and for me. He died on an old rugged cross. He died till the sun stopped shining. They buried him in Joseph's new tomb and they put him in the grave. But early one Sunday morning, got up all power in his hand. He reaped a glorious resurrected body after sowing a sinless, man-beaten, humiliated body into the ground. And now I can say, Jesus, you are my king. Now I can say, Jesus, you're my Lord of Lords. Let me tell you something, church. Don't see me again till next year. Let me refer to say, Happy New Year. If I don't see you again till 219, well, if I don't see you because I'm going to glory, then I want you to have a blessed, prosperous, joyous, beautiful, and fantastic new year. And then if I don't see you again, don't you worry because I'm going on up a yonder to see my Lord. Got to take off my wings and fly away. If that's what he say, do. So if I don't see you in 2019, that would be the best year of your life. And then let's remember that what's what we do in 2019, we got to reap what we sow. And I'm here to say, praise the Lord, because you've been so good. I'm here to talk it out in 218 and say, hallelujah, and thank you, Jesus. I don't know what tomorrow may bring, but I know who holds the future. I've got God with the future in his hands. And all I got to do is keep my head in his hand. Because by and by, and after a while, can't preach no more sermons. By and by, and after a while, we done praying down here. By and by, not the wild. Can't do no box set. By and by, not the wild. I ain't getting in my car and I'm suffering no more. Because I'll be in heaven and I won't need no Lexus or no Cadillac to get around. Because I fly with my wings <laughs> and take my flight. <laughs> so if you don't see me down here, come on up. Come on up. <laughs> I'll be up there in glory. For those going on before. But all I want to say today is keep your hands in God's hands. And God will. God will. He'll take care of you. He'll provide for you. He'll make a way for you. He'll open doors nobody can open. Sister said he's going to roll out a red carpet. <laughs> and walk on in 16, 22. I heard you pray this morning. Said he's going to roll out a red carpet. If we didn't know that, I'm going to be the first one walking on this box. I'm going to say, thank you, Jesus. But when he let us do it, we're going to say, ain't nobody but you, God. But we can do it on our own. Yeah. Didn't have nothing money, didn't have nothing. But you made a way. Yes. <laughs> we're going to put up with church we have no honor, nobody else. Going in our own place. Give God the thanks. Isn't God good? Yes. I'm finished now. Isn't God good? It's about this. Give God a praise, a last praise for 218.